What's up, YouTube? We're back with another episode of What the Hell Am I Doing? And I almost missed my hit. I can't believe it. Wow. It's because it's a Sunday and I'm out of sync today. I don't usually do Sunday episodes. Um, but it's a long weekend in Canada. Uh, it's quote-unquote family day. So me and my family are having a day tomorrow. So yeah, I figured I'd give you guys a bonus episode. I didn't really want to tie this into last night's episode either, so it makes sense to do its own thing. So first of all, I was right again last night about the UFC, so uh, my two picks were correct. Uh, I have once again avoid punishment. Pierre, I'm sorry once again that I cannot do a punishment for you guys and everybody else. So... Um, what can I say, guys? I'm on a roll. I'm picking all the fights right lately. And I'm even taking some risky fights and winning. So, it'll happen. It will happen. Don't you guys worry. I will lose one of these picks one of these days. And it will happen. And I will have to suffer. But, unfortunately, it won't be next week. So, uh, we'll see what happens next week. I might take a week off. I might have a review video out. I've been working on something. Um, so, it might be ready in time for next week. We'll see. But today, it's about growing hot peppers, and I'm going to give you some tips that I've learned from the last two years of growing hot peppers. So uh, that's what this video is about, and if you're a beginner grower, and if you're thinking about starting this season, no matter what year this is, if you're thinking about starting and you've stumbled across this video, I'm going to give you the advice that I had a hard time finding when I was starting out, and... Um, you know, hopefully I can eliminate a lot of those doubts. You're always going to have doubt in your head when you start growing until you have some experience. You're going to question things until you see results. But um, I'll give you the answers that I've gotten in, in my journey, and hopefully that will help you stay calm and uh, learn that you just got to be patient and things will be okay. But, uh, yeah, mainly this episode we're going to talk about um, germinating pepper seeds, uh, and I'm going to show you how I've done it and what I've learned in the last couple of years. Now, if you followed the channel, you know that I, I did update dates on my garden last year and the year before. Um, I've done paper towel germination all three pepper seasons now. And I've learned some things. I use a heat mat and uh, I do the paper towel method. And... Um, the first year it took a long time. The first year it took up to like 50 days to get all my seeds germinated. And uh, not many germinated. I had a very low success rate. It was probably like 10% the first year. Um, the second year I had a higher success rate. Some germinated within two weeks. Most were germinated within three. And I think within 40 days or so I had all my plants germinated. And, uh, you know, I had success on all except for yellow Maruga scorpion. So last year, I had better results. Um, I changed things a bit last year, but still not enough. And I think what the conclusion was that came from those first two years is that the heat mat I bought from Amazon, which is a, just a cheap heat mat, uh, it's probably hot for those seeds on its own. And if they're laying directly on it or even laying on a plastic tray directly on it, um, first of all, it's uneven heating all over the place. It's not an even temperature if you check all the random areas so you got random hot spots around cold spots so that was a problem um but the hot spots i think are too hot and probably were cooking the seeds or killing them when they popped a tap root so that's something I, I realized was causing a lot of hindrance towards getting seeds germinated and then having them break ground um because some of the seeds that were germinated i would put it in the, in the soil and nothing would happen i think it was because they were already dead um so yeah, I learned a lot of things. I didn't buy the temperature gauge because there's no way I could really use a probe with the way I'm germinating these things in in, um, in paper towel because I have each type of seed in a paper towel in its own Ziploc bag and then I have them just in a seedling tray on top of the mat. And uh, that's how I did it last year. So this year, well, you know what? We'll cut down to the grow room and I'll show you guys what I did. But this year's results... Uh, well, look at the pictures up here. Uh, you can see a lot of the, the seeds popped and were tap roots. Um, and the crazy thing was, is this year, all that happened within one week 
of starting the process. And like I said earlier, last year and the year before, it took as long as 40, 50 days to get them all done. Um, but this year, every seed type popped within seven days. I broke soil on day eight on one type, and most of them broke soil by day 10. And as of right now, all the seeds are germinated, and I'm waiting for one to break soil. So I'm going to show you guys a new method that I'm using. Um, I'll take you guys to the grow room because I'm going to give you a quick tour of my new plants. And I'll show you the technique that I did to germinate the seeds. Because right now is the time you should be starting. And if you can germinate them quickly, you're going to have a lot of time for these plants to develop for when it's time to go outside. And they'll be a good size, which is what you want when you go outside so you can get nice and big in the nice warm weather nice and quickly. So I think we're going to stop babbling here. I'm going to take you downstairs and I'm going to show you my growth setup, which is not crazy. So if you're thinking about beginning, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, you can do it on a very basic budget. I'll explain a couple of my choices downstairs that, that I made and the reasons why I made them from mistakes that I learned from before. So I'll help you avoid you make those mistakes. Um, and I'll show you what I've got and how cheaply you could start a pepper grow if you're planning on moving it outside. So why don't we go downstairs to the grow room and I'll take you for a little tour of what's going on and I'll show you my trick. So now we're down in the grow room here and um, this is my basic setup here. I've got uh, two tiny blue and red, which people sometimes refer to as blurple, LED lights, which I bought at Costco for about $20 each, I believe. They're only 18 watts. So I have two of these over an old TV stand um, that right now I have a heating pad and a seedling tray on. And I've got one extra cup right here, which has chocolate bootless seedlings in it. Uh, those were the last seeds to germinate for me. And I ran out of space in the uh, seedling tray. So I did the double solo cup method here. And uh, I threw all the good seedlings in there and I'll keep the good one when it's time. But for now, I'll let them all germinate uh, since I only want one of those plants. So I threw everything in there just to make sure I get something. And uh, I used this Ziploc kind of like a humidity dome. And that'll work. It's on the corner of the pad. So hopefully those will break soil in a couple of days. And uh, I'll have every seedling growing. So this is what I've got going here so far. Um, yeah. It's a very basic setup. Seedling tray you can get for about ten dollars. I think with all with all these starter uh, Pots, I, I think that was about 10 15 bucks. I bought the heating mat at um, Amazon, I think that was twenty dollars. I did not buy the temperature thermometer thing And I'll show you why in the next step here I'll show you how I start the paper towel and the seeds and then I'll show you what I do to give them a nice temperature controlled environment, which seemed to really work well this year because it was in the perfect range and they popped so fast. It was just ridiculous. I mean, Tuesday will be two weeks since I started germinating the seeds. Two weeks. And a lot of these have been growing for days now. I've been venting this for days because I'm waiting for some to finish. And some have been already growing for days. So I've been venting them so they get used to the room. Usually when a seedling breaks ground, you can take the lid off right away and they'll be fine. So because I was sharing space with some that hadn't broke ground, um, I had to keep putting the lid back on. But uh, that's why I was venting it so the ones that are growing get used to the air. Because if they're in a humid environment for too long, they'll get used to that. So, okay, let's move the Scorpia uh, Bulas out of the way. And let's pop this lid off. Let's see what we got. Yes. <clears throat> yes, it makes a mess. Make sure you do this somewhere where uh, humidity is not going to destroy things because you will get water on things and uh, it's inevitable. 
This is an old TV stand now. I'm not going to use the frame in good anymore, but I still wipe it up. I don't want it to get ruined. Uh, if you're wondering why there's foil there, last year I was experimenting with foil between the ceiling tray and the heat mat because I wanted to see if the foil would dissipate some of the heat differences of the mat to help the seedlings grow. Um, versus the year before, it did make a slight difference. But what I'm going to show you next in the video here is what made the biggest difference. But yeah, this is what I've got so far. And it looks like they've all broken ground now. So I'm going to keep this lid off because they're all standing up. So I'll give you a quick tour of what's here. Um, because uh, the garden is pretty much the same as last year, but there's a couple new things. Okay, so the four in the top left corner... Those four are the uh, Trinidad Viper Cross with the Purple Boot. Uh, you've seen those the last couple of years in my garden. So the top four are those in the left corner. The bottom two in the left corner, front corner, are the Yellow Maruga Scorpion. And as you can see, the very bottom left uh broke ground today it hasn't even opened up but it's finally standing so it will open probably in the next couple hours and it'll look like the rest of the plants the middle four in the back are ghost peppers you can see that the this one here there's two um that was because i didn't want to waste the seedlings they were all starting to pop at the same time and at that point, you can't leave them in the bag much longer because they'll come out of the seeds and then you'll have a seedling laying on the paper towel. So uh, I wanted to make sure I had good seeds and everything. So that's why you see multiple seeds in some containers because I wanted to make sure all the ones that were popped were in soil. I can always just cut them off when I decide which one I'm going to keep. But uh, this was to ensure that I had a couple of backups running just in case some didn't break ground. But as you can see in this case... Every seed here broke ground. Okay, moving on to the four containers in the top right corner, just over here. Those four are reapers, and as you can see, the two front rows of the reapers have three each. I'll cut two of those off each and keep the middle one, probably. Um, the two middle right here, one is the chocolate maruga scorpion, and then these three over here in the front row are all leviathans and i'm using the true leviathan seed because i don't know if you were paying attention last year or not i got two variations of leviathan from the same seeds from one pepper so i'm using the seeds that are supposed to be the way it looks and again you see multiple seeds there i will cut off all of them and just keep the middle ones i was throwing backups in there to ensure that everything germinated so that's my 2021 garden so far it's less than two weeks old. Every seed has broken ground, except for the chocolate bootless scorpion, which I expect will probably break ground in the next two days. So let's move on to my kitchen for a second so I can show you how I prepare the paper towel for the seeds and uh, for putting them into the Ziploc bags so you can start the germination. Okay, so the first step and getting your seeds germinated is to get your paper towel saturated with water. What I'm using here is distilled water. And the reason I'm using that is because these could be stored in the baggies for a few weeks. And uh, you want to decrease the chance of mold developing. Um, they use distilled water in humidors for this reason. So you don't get mold on your cigars and all over the place. So... Um, that's why I use distilled water to do this, to reduce the chance of mold. Obviously, you're introducing contamination by putting the seeds in there. But um, having less stuff in there that can cause problems is better long term. So anyways, this is what I do. I take a, a half sheet of, uh, I'm going to hold this in front of my Mocha Master here. Um, which, by the way, is a great coffee machine if you haven't seen my review. But yeah, I have a half sheet of uh, paper towel. And what I do is I just simply put her in the water, just pull her through like this once, she's soaked. And then what you do, squeeze it out. Squeeze it out nice and good, and that's what you're left with. And then, 
all you do is flatten out this paper towel again, uncrinkle it. And once you're done doing this, we'll get this bowl out of here. You would put your paper towel down on a surface, like so. Okay. I don't have any seeds here. I'm not going to waste seeds on this, but you would uh, take about half the length of the paper towel because you're going to fold it over itself afterwards. Um, and you just would sprinkle your seeds. I usually would start with about 10 to 15 seeds if you're growing for the first time. You're going to throw seeds away either way. It's better to have too many than not enough if you're trying to get a certain amount of plants going. Expect some failure until you become comfortable with the process. So let's say we have 15 seeds. What I would do is sprinkle them on, on one half of this paper towel. I'd sp spread them out, you know, half inch to an inch apart. So, you know, just all over the place and kind of fill in this area. And then when you're done, what you would do is you would fold it over like so and pat it down. So now the seeds are in between this paper towel, which is damp, but not heavily wet. Like you saw, I squoze it all out so there's no... Heavy amount of water, when you squeeze it, it's not going to drip anything out. Because when you wring that thing out, it should be drip-free by the time you're done. So, this is the whole secret with, with seedlings. You don't want them too wet, you don't want them too dry. And by doing it this way, the paper towel is damp enough. It's not heavily wet. Like I said, when you squeeze it, there should be no water dripping out after you've wrung it out. So now we're going to pretend that they're in here, and I fold it in half... You could even fold it in half one more time if you want to. I would take it like this. You slide into a paper towel bag or a, sorry, a Ziploc bag like so. So you put it in, I like to put them sideways like this, the length of the bag. And then you flatten out the bag and kind of squeeze all the air out. Whoops, I didn't get it quite in all the way. There you go. So you make sure all the air is out and uh, you seal up the bag. And there you go. Your seeds are now in the rightly, uh, right amount of dampness in the paper towel, sealed in the bag, and they're ready to go to the heat mat where I'm going to show you how to do that properly because pepper seeds need to be between a certain temperature range to really have a good success rate of germinating. So I'll show you what to do so you can have a success, success rate as well. Okay, so once you've got all your seeds into the paper towels, which of course are dampened and then squozen out, like I've said, so that no more water will drip. Once you've got your paper towels with the seeds mixed together and all separated into their own Ziploc bags by strain, it's now time to get them onto the heating mat so that they can start their journey of germination. And this here is the technique that I discovered this year works the best. Directly on the heating mat is too hot if you don't have a thermometer. And the thermometer is a probe, so it would be difficult with Ziploc bags to really probe the temperatures. So that method is not going to work. If you put a tray on top and then throw them in the tray and throw the dome on top, they still get warm, but I believe they get too hot. I believe they get into the high 20s doing it that way with this mat. And that's too hot. So what I figured, there's got to be a way to do a little bit of an insulation barrier between the heat and the seedlings, but also to dissipate the heat so that all of them see the same amount of heat and there's no hot spots. Because like I said, this bat's kind of cheap, and if you go from section to section across it, you're going to find some areas are hot, some areas are not as hot, some areas might even be cold. So, but what I decided was that I would take the crappy seedling tray that I started with a couple years ago. By the way, never start with crappy stuff. It'll only bite you in the ass. So I started with the crappy seedling tray. And what I did is I took the lid and I put, as you can see, I, can put, I put some water in there. It's not very deep, but it's enough. And the idea behind this is that now I would take the bottom of the seedling tray and drop it in top so now what this has done is it's created like an insulation barrier of water 
and that water is going to take the heat from the mat and that water is going to evenly spread out the temperature and it's going to equalize to something and what i found with my experiments during this grow is that during the week that i was germinating the temperature that the seeds were exposed to was between 24 and 25 degrees celsius which is around 77 78 fahrenheit somewhere around there and that is absolutely the perfect zone that you want your hot pepper seeds to be sitting at for germination now this trick would also work if you have like a glass container or something that won't flex you could put pots in there if you were putting your seedlings in dirt and that pot would uh get equal temperature no matter where it is inside this tray where if you didn't do it some pots may be hotter than others but yeah this is the idea so you can see the water's not coming out i didn't put too much that when you put weight in there it's going to squeeze out the size it's just enough that it distributes the heat across the bottom and then all you would do is take your seeds that are in paper towels these are actual seeds which i no longer need because these ones broke ground today when i opened it these are yellow maruga scorpion seeds but so there's actual seeds germinating here. So all you would do is take them, throw them in there. And that tray that they're sitting on will warm up to be about 24, 25 degrees for the duration they're on there. Because that water barrier will, will keep things consistent and even. So let's move on to how you prepare soil so that uh, the seeds can grow once you have a taproot. Because eventually you're going to get to a point where... The seeds will pop a taproot and they'll look like the pictures I showed at the start of the video. So I'll show you how to prepare the soil for that stage so that uh, they grow from there. Because if you put them in too wet of a soil or too dry of a soil, they'll die. Soil is the next important stage of starting your pepper seeds or any kind of seeds for that matter. And I'll give you a tip right now. Do not buy the cheapest crap that you can buy. Cheap soil will only lead to problems. You'll get bugs. The soil will not... Uh, be airy enough so the roots will not grow uh, it'll compact when you water it and it'll become like clay when it's dry you want a quality potting soil i started with pro mix herb and vegetable mix technically you're supposed to start with a potting mix but uh, i've had friends that started seeds directly in the herb and vegetable mix which has a little bit of fertilizer in it and you're actually supposed to use once the plant has a few sets of leaves till it fl uh, fruits and apparently works great so that's actually what i started my seedlings in but you could start with a uh, starter uh, a seedling starter mix or something similar to this if you wanted to mix something of your own up but do not buy cheap soil cheap soil will compact and it will prevent root growth root growth and you will have nothing but problems that's a mistake i made year one so don't do that and you'll avoid a lot of heartache i bought this quality soil and what I like about this stuff is, is you can saturate it with water and um, it will not compact. It's, it's actually a peat-based soil. It's not really topsoil at all. Um, so it's peat-based, so it holds moisture, but it doesn't compact. And, um, you know, the, the natural fertilizer, and it's a real nice bonus too. It seems to last the entire grow season from the way things looked last year. So I already mixed some of this stuff up because I had to do that yellow maruga uh solo cup seed earlier but i just wanted to show you guys this is the same trick basically as the paper towel when when you saturate your soil you want to be able to make it so you could squeeze it into cakes like that but you see how it just kind of breaks apart it's moist enough to make cakes like that but see how there's just see how like just a barely barely any water comes out barely you can barely see anything that's what you want i'm squeezing the crap out of it and just just a little bit of moisture squeeze it out that's how it should be what you would do is you loosely pack that into a cup you slowly pack it in use your fingers and lightly tap it in and fill it up you don't want to compress it you just want to pack it gently with your fingers just by poking it down and then you want to bury your seed about a quarter inch deep and some of the seeds will have tap roots that's fine 
All you do is make sure the tap root is pointing down and try to keep the seed above it. And uh, nature will do its thing. But make sure they're about a quarter inch down. Cover them up. Don't pack the dirt down tight. But cover them up and gently pack it down because you want those seeds to have a little resistance as they grow so that the plant will pull out of the seed before it comes out of the dirt. But the most important thing I can tell you for success do not have your soil too wet. It should compact like that. It should break apart when you gently push on it like that. But you shouldn't have water dripping out when you squeeze it. Like a little bit of moisture might squeeze out residually. But you shouldn't have water dripping off my hands in back into the pot like you did not see there. If I'm doing this and water is dripping all over the place, it's too wet. You should be able to squeeze the shit out of it and have nothing dripping. And that's pretty much perfect for seedlings. You put your seed in there. You can maybe get a quick spray with a mister if, you, if you're a little concerned. But you don't want that water to, you don't want that soil oversaturated or the seed will drown. Well, there you have it. You guys got a tour of my 2021 pepper seedlings, which as you can see, are all looking pretty good. Um... I showed you some tips on how to start your peppers uh, from the germination right through to uh, getting them into the soil. So I hope that helps all you guys. And if you have any questions, please leave comments and I'll help you out. But uh, the main thing is, is don't panic. If you follow what I said in this video, you'll have success. I promise you that. All right. Well, I appreciate you all tuning in to see my garden. And you'll see some grow tips on how to get your garden started. And I'm going to keep doing this series along with the course of this grow season so you guys can see how things change and develop over time. And of course, I'll explain anything that I'm doing so you know, you know what you can do to, to catch up to what I'm doing. So I'll try to make it easy because not everybody understands everything. And, um, you know, sometimes you just need to see the basics. So I can give you guys that. And of course, if you have questions, please ask. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you check out this video here, which is yesterday with me picking the UFC 258 fights, which uh, you now know, of course, that I uh, picked correctly. And check out this random video here, which I think will be something from last year's bros. So you can see what I did last year. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you tune in next week. We'll see you soon.